So today we're in Halifax and we're looking for a former railway tunnel, 267 yards in length. It is the former Lee Bank Tunnel. We've got some beautiful surroundings. It's a really frosty day. Look at that down there. You can see there's the old mill just through there. And I've got Steve with me. You haven't seen him for a long time. <laughs> Seems rain, remember? That's it. <laughs> you may have seen him in movies such as Oxenden, Haircastle and Haddon Tunnel. Say Haddon, yeah. say Haddon. Haddon. <laughs> not not Haddon. <laughs> Haddon. <laughs> Haddon Tunnel. So we're going to turn about and I'm going to show you this bricked up portal of the 267 yard long Lee Bank Tunnel. Spin you around and we're getting just a little bit closer. So just before we step down to the brook and appear at the other side on the forward track bed, there's also this quaint little bridge. It's very, very narrow, isn't it? Now, whether it was a railway or a road, I've absolutely got no idea, but it could make sense. It could have been an industrial line which came out and turned about onto the road just there and some sort of loading or unloading location. But it's indeed a beautiful little thing. And it's pretty much the same height as track bed level on the opposite side. If I run round, that's just there. That is the main line just there, what we're about to walk along towards the tunnel. So if anybody knows, comment below. So we're just on the old track bed near Mill Lane and Old Lane. And we've just found these beside well, we don't know what they are. They're like circular indentations beside the track bed and the rock has been carved out just there. But we haven't got a clue what they are. No, certainly specific some structure they've, they've done some purpose. Yeah, and it's got like a, it's like a solid outer circular, but it has been carved out. So there's another one just up here. It's, it's a bit deeper, isn't it, this one? Yeah, I mean, you can certainly see him. Um... It's all been carved out just there. It's like a circular. And there's the railway bridge of Old Lane over there. So three locations today. The first one being Lee Bank Tunnel, 267 yards in length. And that is situated just here. Completely made of stone inside with just a little bit of minimal red and blue brick inside So it's a difficult one to light up this one the stonework stained black and nothing for the light to bounce off Right next to that. We've got the old mill lane mill Adjacent to the tunnel there used to be a huge mill and dye works the old lane mill now that building is still standing complete with its huge chimney and we're gonna have a quick look at the exterior of that before we move along towards Wheatley Viaduct just over here. Almost 100 feet at its highest point and 200 yards in length. But back to where we are at the beginning of this explore, we've got Lee Bank Tunnel just here and we've got the old Lane Mill right here. So here we are at the portal. And this line did in fact open in 1874 to freight traffic and it opened to passengers in 1879, five years later on. But the decline became in the 1930s, around about 1938, Sunday services were scrapped and eventually over the next three decades it just got lower and lower in passenger and freight numbers until it led to its eventual closure. So how are you finding it so far? It's actually pretty warm inside, yeah. so uh, electric bills are down, yeah. uh, and naturally it saves rent. It does save rent. What are you doing for food nowadays when you're around here? Well, whatever I can actually catch. Uh, there may be some roadkill at the moment, I'll go up and get that. But apart from that, uh, plenty of nature's best there. Mushrooms, the guys, berries, um, and again when it comes to um, good old liver from whatever. <laughs> <laughs> So without further ado, I think it's time to get inside this tunnel and walk the length of it and see what history it does in fact hold inside. Hello everyone. Hey. Oh, got my knees stuck. Come on. Come on, it's nice and warm. It is warm in here, isn't it? Yeah. Very warm. It's warm in the ground here. I like to get so we've come through the little portal, there you can see a little support brick sticking out there. Just take the beam away from it, you can just make that out. And you can see numerous places where the brickwork has in fact been patched up. 
this bit, especially if I step back, get the beam off it somewhat, you can see where right in the centre of shot. That was in fact, well there's all the bricks down there, it looks like it's been kicked in or smashed in at some point. Nice bit of workmanship though, patching that up. And that even looks like someone's home down there. And immediately in the um, entrance where you can see where the stonework changes just there where I've got the beam on that. It's a blue brick roof all the way across, covered in years of soot and diesel and all manner of residue. It's almost like it was extended slightly at some point because it does stop there look, it's a straight line all the way down and it continues on for about another 15, 20 feet until you get to the actual portal. So about one third of the way in, it changes. So we've got that line of stone up there, and then we get here, and it turns into brick on the right. And it's also at a slightly different level. As we get to the center, you can see it brighten up a little bit. There's a step down or a step up. I'd say that's about a quarter, half a meter. It's hard to say from down here. There's bits of red brick in there as well, right where I'm shining the beam right now. And then back around. Is like a ledge going across where the brick sits on top of the stonework. And again, just here, the stonework changes again to a more sandy colour. So there's a good variety of most likely local stone that's been used to construct this tunnel. Still not seen any refuges along here though, which is pretty peculiar. Not a single one. So what the camera does not pick up is we are on quite a gradient, we're halfway through on the curve. Ooh, just went a bit dark there. But there is a gradient on the ground. It is very, very steep. If I can find out what that is online, I shall put it on screen somewhere. But it is, it's quite a steep climb. If we look the other way, you still can't make it out, but it is going downhill towards the other portal. Bit of a repair job's gone off just here, a little square section or rectangular section of red brick. And then back to the stonework, just there where my beam is hitting it. Some lovely colours on that roof at the moment. So the other portal, it is breeze blocked off. Look, there's a little opening at the top, which is probably for little bats to get out of if they really, really want to, or if they want to come in. Yeah. And it's a little bit wet at this end. So that don't matter, we're not going any further. Random breeze blocks laying around, but not a lot of footprints. So I can imagine not a lot of people actually do come down here. Changing stonework as well, just there, look. You can see it's similar to the other end, look. If you follow the beam up, you can see that straight line going up and it goes over the top and down the other side, which suggests the portal was probably built separately to the rest of the tunnel because it would have been done first. So we just come outside of Lee Bank Tunnel, very, very short, and it surprised me how there was absolutely no refuges on either side 
right the way through. Quite a descent down to the other portal as well. And it's on quite a gradual curve. So that's 267 yards in length. There he is, look at this. The, uh, what do you think to that? Still saving rain and it's actually pretty warm in there. It, Get yourself a tunnel. It is the way forward, isn't it? Yes. Um, so here you can make out where that brickwork is. Look, what we saw on the inside, it goes across and down on both sides and you can see where there was brackets. So it shows there probably was a gate on here at one point for access. So side on with the portal that we've just been in. Look at this, we've got ourselves higher up. Steve's already up there. I think I'm actually gonna be an idiot and walk around there myself. Right about this way. It's frosty, so it's a bit grippier than if it was mud. But we are going to get ourselves on top of the portal. And I'm going to do it without slipping. There he is. <laughs> what do you think, Steve? Yeah, we're up the top here. So this would be your patio area overlooking the tunnel if you was to live here. Yes, yep. Yeah, yeah this is, that, again, surprise the heat that's in there. So if you want to save electricity, get yourself a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> but look how far down you can see where Richard is down there. Yeah. It's actually a very, very long way down. And again, we've come around the other side and you can just make out the portal just there. It just shows how deep this cutting actually is. Got some old sleepers laid under the undergrowth look and the leaves from the current autumn weather. So that's Broad Tree Lane up there and it leads off to Old Lane and the junction of Mill Lane just down there. If the railway carried on, which it once did obviously, it went off towards Queensbury, but the bridge is still there. And on the other side, it's a completely barren open space with a gym on the other side. So there's no remains of the line over that part whatsoever. Now a little way down from the tunnel portal you come down here and it used to be milling country around here in Halifax didn't it and we've got this huge huge mill one two three four five six stories high I thought it was seven from a distance look at the chimney still stood there we can actually get in that building so we're going to do that in just a moment but that's going to need a bit of drone flying above that isn't it we'll have a walk around the edge there is going to be no way in we know that even before trying you can just see it's got too many site safety signs up what a beautiful, busy, bustling workforce must have been in there at one time. So a quick look at this map from the 1940s. You've got Old Lane Mill right here. That's the building that we're just looking at. And you can see how big the shaded area of where all the buildings actually were for this mill. And there was even a mill pond as well. Look, Now, Lee Bank Tunnel is just here and you can see the railway line darting into that. If we go to the partially fade of map, we can see roughly where things are on the lay of the land today. You can see the former railway line. You can see the main road snaking its way from top to bottom and the land where the mill buildings were. And straight to Google Maps from today and it all becomes clearer that it's a completely barren landscape. Just the old main mill building stands. So currently I don't know any in information on this but look inside here this is astonishing look at the chimney I imagine what would have been the furnace look down there an old inspection tunnel of some sort old bricked up access just there and the brackets look at that that is that is beautiful and it looks like it's in such amazing condition let's go around the other side 
and appears to be open. It is a little bit, look, you can just see a little way in there, but it is all infilled and collapsed just there. Out this side, we've got the main mill building. Look at that, and look at that, all bricked up. So much history. tar like smell around here as well i don't know what would have been here at one point that culvert you've just seen a shot of down there i wouldn't mind getting down there another time and shining the light in there but i've only got walking shoes on today so that's not going to happen now you can remember that culvert we saw at both ends of the mill all this inspection pit just there look i'll show you that and i've come down the ladder to have a little look and that's one way that's back up towards the tunnel and that is to the far side of the mill itself. I might get to get over this wall and have a little look. So there's a much better view going down there. Look at that. Stunning. And the entrance is just out of sight down there around that corner. And that's the view We're looking back towards our tunnel. I'm going to get myself back up top. Behind me is Wheatley Viaduct, it's 100 feet in height and it's almost 200 yards in length. And as you can see, it's barricaded off, we can't get on it. It's got 10 stone arches and looks down deep into the valley on either side. But if it's blocked off, who do you call? Push, push, push. You're going up there, aren't you? Yeah, I'll give you a quick preview. Okay. Where, where there's a Steve, there's a way. Nothing fantastic, but yeah. That's fine, Steve. Don't do this at home. No. <laughs> so, that's it. So now we're going to talk to you in a Scottish accent. I'm going to hand over to Steve. He's going to go for a walk on the viaduct and we'll see you when he gets back, hopefully. So a quick reminder of where we were. So there's Lee Bank Tunnel and the mill just over there. And Wheatley Viaduct is right across the other side of the map on that curve, the purple curve of the railway line just there. I'll zoom in a little bit for you and we can see exactly where it was. Wheatley Tunnel is also situated further towards the top of the map. That'll be for another day. But now we're going to head on down to Wheatley Viaduct and get Steve to take us across. Here we are, Wheatley Viaduct. As you can see, this end is actually blocked off. Plenty of vegetation here. Yeah. To be honest, it looks as if it's not been accessed that well. Great views though down the valley. We've got an industrial area down there, I don't know if you can see that well, but again, tremendous views. Do a quick walk along here just to let you see it all.
bit of view though. Right side. Again, industrial area. Let's see how far it goes. It's a few hundred yards, but. As if we're coming to a tree line anyway. Yeah, and as you see, it's not actually used much. Obviously, because it's blocked off. Quite a bit of brick breakage there. Almost at the end. The vegetation has got much dense here. We scramble our way through it anyway. Similar to the far end. Well done, Steve. Yeah, we managed it. What a guy. Yeah, local flame initially with tree, but at least the tree was there for support. And again, there is a, a back framing. You can actually get some good um, footholds and hand grafts on there. It's got to, um, don't do this at home. So, is it, is it worth moving in? <laughs> yeah, that's got potential. Um, that's some potential there, so I'll speak with the, the stage and. <laughs> Well, then we to Bridge and we... I, I wasn't going to go in, then decided to... ...to make me This is Wheatley Viaduct. It's a hundred feet high. At its, uh, I'm talking shit again. This is Wheatley Viaduct. And the highest point is a hundred. Is it feet or meters? There he is. Look at this. The. Um, what do you think to that? Still saving rain, and it's actually pretty warm in there. It, Get yourself a tunnel. It is the way forward, isn't it? Yes. Um, so. We're going to take you to see another tunnel. It's a bit like what's that? What's that um, show that's on TV where they go around houses and. They choose one at the end of the day. Homes under the hammer, we'll say it's that. Yeah. Might be that. It's a bit like that, isn't it? But it's like tunnels under the hammer. Sounds like fun. All right, let's take you to the next location. This is what it's about. Follow and like and subscribe. Yeah.